next session. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you very much, Michael, for sharing the opening. Thanks a lot. Okay, so the last part of the, of the session, we have a presentation from Ron Decker. I invite Ron on stage. So Ron is from the Technopolis Group in charge of the Open Science team and is the project director of EOS Future. Ron, please. Yes, uh, thank you, Sarah. And um, as you know, the theme of this uh, conference is talking about the future, but to understand the future uh, and to talk about the future, you must understand the past. So that is also what we did before we started with the EOS Future Project, which started in April 21. So we, we had a look at what is already going on, and I think Michelle also gave an overview of, of current projects, of past projects, it, on, on different topics, on um, technology, on training, on, on the, the, the communities, the research infrastructures. And this is just a snapshot, a, a summary. It's not even all the, the projects. The full overview is in the, is in the link. And what we did is, when we started the EOS Future project, it started with the, with the vision, and this was also mentioned by Gustav Kalber this morning, it's a system of systems. EOS builds on what is already there. And of course, you want to have synergy, you want to have more than just the sum of, of, the, of the elements. It's also about uh, building trust, this was also mentioned also by uh, Joaquin this morning and, and Gustav. And yes, the, the, the project is very technical. It is about realizing a platform. But right from the start, we knew it's, yes, it's technology. It's also about content uh, from data, the, the, the services, the tools that would be available from research infrastructures and other service providers. It's also about engagement, and I think this will come, keep coming back. Right, uh, even from the start, we wanted to have uh, stakeholders involved uh, from, from the association, from uh, research infrastructures, research communities, um, and we wanted to have it user-centric. And this is about getting the researchers involved. For us, EOSC is also serving science. We have to provide uh, a platform for, the, for doing research, easier, faster, or better re research. I think that is a main goal of realizing this EOSC. And what in our mission is, is pretty simple. Um, realize this EOSC platform. And we, we, we are doing this with um, bringing together major stakeholders, the e-infrastructures, the research infrastructures, RDA, Technopolis uh, on, on the project management, and we were making use of what already existed. And from this, we, we worked on these, on these pillars. You, you can see the policy is coming back, the, the, the science, the infrastructures, the data, uh, training. This will come back in this uh, in in this project. So, as I said, the focus is serving science. We want to have a good platform that is being used by end users, that is being used by researchers. And for this, you talk about uh, finding data, getting access to data, using data, but also make use of of computer power, uh, computer storage that is available to see if you can develop workflows that help researchers doing research in a better way to do uh, and, and to make it easier to do reproducibility analysis. And it's about integrating services. One of the key words for, for the EOSC is uh, composability. So you can build on what is already there. It can be data, it can be combining with other data, it can be integrating with, with services that exist, 
This was one of the, the, the key features of, uh, of the EOSC and the EOSC Future Project. And many of you might have seen this already. It's, it's the overview, very simplified, of how the, the EOSC platform looks like. It's the core and, and the exchange in the middle. It's supporting services uh, like training, but also help desk. And it's the interoperability framework giving you the standards. And if you put the federating uh, system of systems and the federating governance on top, for the economist, this looks very much like uh, Henry Mintzberg's structure of, uh, in fives. So it's how you design organizations, or in this case, uh, platforms. We had May, uh, a couple of main goals, and of course that was to realize this technology, the, the core, the exchange, the interoperability framework, but also to provide this content. We wanted to have data, we wanted to have um, uh, tools and services available and see if it works. Does it work if we provide this that researchers start using it, that researchers from one discipline start using data from another discipline. I think this cross-disciplinary uh, approach is a second key issue next to the composability of the value added of, of EOS. Can, can you make use of each other's data? And again, then trust and quality of data comes along. So that, that has to be in the, in the, in the platform almost by design. Some numbers on what we are doing during this uh, project. Um, we, um, we have now about 500 services on board. And, and this went almost <coughs> stepwise. Sometimes we had 10 services a month, uh, up to 140 per month. So it's, it's, it's going, it's growing, and it comes from all kinds of uh, disciplines, backgrounds, basic research, applied research, technology. But I think if we want to um, catch up with the EOSC and make it a, a, a real standard and a, a useful tool, this has to go up even further. It has to go up steeper. But at least we have this proof of concept. We show it works. We have quite a number of, of services available um, so that the, the early adopters, uh, the researchers who are uh, eager to use new ways of doing research can use this. Um, some other numbers on the, on the platform, uh, quite some users uh, looking around for tools and services, uh, also the number of, of visits, but again, this is during the, the, the two and a half years of the project. And again, it's good, but it has to go up if, if this really becomes a standard in, the, in, in doing science. Um, going more to the end of the project, we, we started to do also to discuss about what, is, what are the results, what are the so-called key uh, exploitable results Basically two groups, one is on capitalizing the project results, and that includes the EOS core and the exchange, uh, content from the science project. We had 10 science projects where the, the starting uh, point was work together, work over disciplines. Let's see what happens if you combine social sciences with, uh, with environmental sciences. And we have also uh, EOSC Observatory, it was mentioned by, by Volker, um, to, to have a monitoring system in following what's happening in, in, on EOSC in the different countries. Um, the second one is the, the, the showcasing what, what's happening in this, uh, in this platform. And again, this is about the supporting things like the interoperability framework, the knowledge hub with a lot of training. It, it contains training facilities, it has a catalog, but it also has a, a, a means of adding new training using professional tools. So this training is, is adding functionality, adding uh, value to the, to the EOSC. On the, 
on the commercial services and support, there were two flavors. One was, let's call it the more traditional approach. How can we get um, from commercial or non-commercial providers access to storage, to computing time, to networks? The second flavor was, let's see if we can do and develop new services, new commercial services. And that, that was going into a new terrain also, and, and sometimes hitting the, the, the boundaries of, of, of the horizon framework. But it, it learned, it, for us, we learned a lot of how you do these things and how you not do these, these uh, things. Um, and the community. We, we had focus groups. It's very important for us to, um, to have this connection, to have the co-creation right from the start in design, setting up the architecture, in, in setting up uh, the interoperability framework, because that has to come from, from the research communities, from the research infrastructures, um, to, to, to see if this what, what they are using, for example, on metadata, if this works in the, in the EOSC environment. So these are the key exploitable results. These are the eight main groups. We have 40 plus results on, on a lower level, and, and this will be also handed over in, in the, uh, after the project to, to follow up projects. Um, and that, that was already mentioned, this uh, future. But um, what, what you see uh, is, uh, or what we have done in the project, is I think we have set the foundation for the EOSC platform. We have added functionalities, um, and I'm pretty sure that in the near future, new functionalities will come, even extension of the foundation might, might be developed. And this is also, um, I think, in short, I, I think in short for the next three years. There is the procurement already mentioned. There is the EOSC Observatory, which will be a dedicated project uh, starting in December uh, on, the, on the monitoring. It's um, further development of functionality. Uh, there is an EOSC Beyond project starting next year, but there are also many other projects that will, I'm pretty sure, will develop new features of, of the EOSC uh, platform. And the science clusters also take up this in a, in a project called OSCARS, and there are also several uh, research and, and uh, science clusters specific projects that will take up uh, the the, the work that has been done in the EOSC Future Project. Um, for the long run, it's important, uh, I think, to, to have this commitment from the European Commission, from the member states and the associated countries, from the service providers. But be, because you can have a platform, but if you have no content, no user will come. If you don't in, uh, invest in the engagement, if you don't invest in in getting users on board, and um, you, they will not stay. They will they will leave and, and look look somewhere else. So I think it's it's very important to have this um, this long term commitment because then service providers will invest in features that connect and are on the on the EOSC platform. And doing this is an inclusive approach. You need all the stakeholders, the research infrastructures, the e-infrastructures, um, but also intermediate organizations like the research libraries. We have ongoing discussions of should we aim for the, en the, the end users to, to reach out or should we reach out to intermediate organizations, libraries, research infrastructures, and they reach out to the, to the, to the researchers. Perhaps it can be both, but th these are ongoing discussions. And for me, um, looking at this project uh, that is now going on for two and a half years, the keywords also for, for this conference are the disengagement. Get engaged with the stakeholders, with the researchers. How can we serve science? 
Uh, for me, that, that, that remains a key question. It's about continuity and sustainability. Um, for the short term, next three years, yes. Longer term, all kinds of discussion, in, including uh, what's happening beyond, uh, beyond the Horizon program. So for me, this would be the, the, the key takeaways uh, for, this, uh, for this symposium. Um, and also, I originally, this project would come to an end, end of September. We are currently in the process of seeing whether we can, the, whether the project can be extended, and that has to do with the timeline of, of some of the, the projects uh, above, like the procurement, other projects. So it might be a little bit early to already say this thank you to the 100 plus partners that were in the project and the 400 plus people working on this uh, project. But, but still, I think we accomplished this foundation. We, we set up the EOSC platform. It's working. It has 500 uh, tools and, and, and uh, services. There is an enormous amount of data via catalogs and directly available. And I think we will work in the next six months to, to, to work on this handing over to uh, EOSC uh, platform in the next phase. And to conclude, um, there was already talking about AI this morning by, by Gustav, by Emanuela. So we also asked uh, AI, yes, we asked uh, ChatGPT uh, to, to write um, a story about EOSC uh, platform, EOSC future, according to the Greek gods. And of course, there is Athena, which is occasionally, uh, accidentally also the coordinator of uh, the formal coordinator of the project. So it's the goddess of wisdom. And for me, it is, of course, EOSC is spanned across the heavens. Um, it is about, and now it becomes more serious, I think. Um, it's helping the researchers. We have to serve the scientists. And for me, it, the, the, the most important one is perhaps in the end, we have um, the power of collaboration. We, we showed it in the project. We were different cultures, infrastructures, uh, RDA, the, the, the E-Infras, other 100 plus uh, partners. That was a feature of, of this project. And I think we managed to realize this platform. And what I like especially is this uh, human curiosity. And I think we should nurture this curiosity and continue this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ron. I think there is one uh, interesting question uh, on Slido for you. How can new services be onboarded on the EOS Future platform after the end of the project? Um, depends what is the end of the project. We have the project <laughs> officer in the room, so I have to be very careful. Uh, the project normally would have ended uh, did this, uh, this month, but we are working to, to keep EOS uh, platform open, and then it, it is the, the current procedure is you, you can go to the, to the EOS platform. We have a procedure for uh, providers. Uh, first, as a, if you are a new provider, you have to be accepted. That's one procedure. The second one, the moment you start uploading services, that, that's also following a procedure. That will continue, at least for the for the upcoming six months, depending on, uh, on the extension. OK, thank you. Are there any other questions for Ron from the room, or maybe online? I think they want lunch. Oh, maybe one. Oh. <laughs> oh. Actually, I asked this question on Slido. Uh, so for uh, my observation, I'm not a member of the EOS Future or any other project. Uh, from my impression, after a Prague meeting, I've seen that, uh, yes, the, that project haven't demonstrated 
from my point of view, professional design approach to building digital infrastructure. A, a fair principle, FED, requires a very robust and complicated infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Only some components currently uh, uh, developed of this, say, hypothetic uh, ideal infrastructure. But still, there is no common architecture that use experience of digital infrastructure community. Even saying giant approach to building network infrastructure yeah. and services. Telecom community has a common architecture that enables all providers build reliable and compatible interoperable infrastructure. So what I haven't seen this, maybe something changed in one year. But from my professional point of view, I haven't seen this signs of this. How to change this? Yeah. I would say that uh, EOSC need to invite professional digital community to uh, build the okay, correct, sustainable, sustainable uh, in sense of uh, technical infrastructure. I fully agree. Uh, wh what we do with the EOS uh, platform is, is a technical solution. It's, it's a tool that can help. What we run into is if, if you start discussing the quality of data or the fairness of data, you will need the expertise of, of the science clusters, of the science communities, because they, they can judge if, if data quality is, is okay. And this becomes more and more important because if I'm, as a social scientist, start using Copernicus data or other environmental data, then I, I must get some insurance that it's okay to use these data. Uh, I need help in, in how I should use this data in a correct way. So I think EOS platform, yes, it's, it's the tool. In the interoperability framework and also in the guidelines we have in the interoperability, it's also a bottom-up process, and this needs to be organized, and I think we must organize it with the communities, uh, because they have the knowledge on the, on the quality of data, how to use these data. And of course, we can provide trainings, and we can provide catalogs, but uh, I think it was uh, um, uh, Michel or um, uh, Michael addressing the other items of doing open science. Fair data, the EOS platform are elements. You, you need to have the reward system. If, if you want to have good data, start rewarding the data scientists that provide you with these data. So it's all kinds of elements that you will need. And as I said, EOS is a, a platform is a tool. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ron. And I think we are, time is over. Thank so you so thank, you, thank you, <laughs> thank you very much. couple of uh, housekeepings uh, before the lunch. So these are what you see on the screen are the breakout sessions that we have today in the afternoon, okay? So Plaza de Armas is this room and you will see the sessions that are taking place here. The other two rooms are just uh, over the corridor over there, so very close. Everything is on the same floor. Uh, next slide, please. So tonight, uh, so the day doesn't finish only at six today, but tonight uh, uh, we welcome you to the El, El Jardin de Arzabal. Sorry for my poor Spanish. Uh, so the event starts at roughly at eight. So make sure, I mean, you will have a couple of hours in between the end of the session and uh, uh, the social event. Uh, next slide. Uh, so we will have two groups leaving from the hotel in case you want to either walk with us or come with us. So one uh, leaves at uh, quarter past seven and one uh, half past seven in the lobby. So just be there by that time if you want to go together. Otherwise, uh, next slide please. 
So that's the instruction on how to reach the venue. You should have this instruction already in your email. So this was sent to you when uh, we communicated all the instructions of the event. But just to make sure, so the, um, the social dinner uh, venue is uh, in the Reina Sofia Museum, very close. And uh, there is a metro too from Ventas to the Banco de España. And then from there, either you walk for 20 minutes uh, or you take a bus. But however, make sure you, you're going to be there. Uh, last slide. So now, before the lunch, is also the time for the group photo. Uh, I have my colleagues over there that are going to guide you to the swimming pool to, <laughs> to have the group photo. So first recommendation, be careful. Don't jump into the swimming pool. Um, but then, please, so just follow my colleagues uh, just outside the room. We take the group photo, and then the lunch is where you had the coffee break, outside in the gazebo, and we reconvene at 2, okay? Thank you so much.